In this lesson, we want to review negative exponents and the quotient rule for exponents. So not that long ago in one of our previous review sessions, we reviewed some rules of exponents, right? We talked about the power rules for exponents, and we also talked about the product rule for exponents. And we learned about an exponent of zero, right? We learned that if we took a non-zero number and we raise it to the power of zero, we always end up with the number one. So today we're going to start out by looking at negative exponents, and then we'll move into the quotient rule for exponents. And you'll see that we're going to need these rules as we start to review radical expressions, okay? So with negative exponents, we're going to look at this using a pattern, and it's the same pattern we use to show how we get a non-zero number raised to the power of zero to be equal to one. So I like to work with the number two, it's nice and small if you're kind of teaching exponents. So if I started out with something like two to the first power, we know this is two. So let's just start here. Then two squared is what? Well, I could take two and I could multiply it by two, right? Because I have two factors of two now, and that would be four. So to increase the exponent by one, to go from one to two, I take this number here and I multiply by two. Let's do that again. If I now go to two cubed, what do I do? I can take this guy right here, this four, and I can multiply by two. I can multiply by two, and I'll get to eight. Four times two is eight, so two cubed is eight, okay? Very, very easy to understand that. Now, if we reverse the process, let me kind of erase what I've put here. If I want to decrease my exponent by one, starting at the three, if I want to go down to two, I would take this eight, the result from two cubed, and I would basically divide it by two. So eight divided by two gives me four. Then if I wanted to go from two squared to two to the first power, again, I'd start at four and I would just divide by two, right? Four divided by two would give me two. So following this same pattern, when we get to two to the power of zero, right? One minus one is zero. All I'm gonna do is again, just divide by two. So two divided by two gives me one, okay? This is what we've already learned. Any non-zero number raised to the power of zero is one. And the reason it can't be zero is zero to the power of zero would end up being zero over zero, which is undefined, okay? So as we continue to move down, now we would have two to the power of negative one, right? If I decrease zero by one, I get negative one. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna divide one by two. So this is gonna give me one divided by two, you could basically write that as one half, okay? One half. Now, as I keep going, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a pattern emerge. So two to the power of negative two would be what? It would be one half divided by two. Okay, so divided by two. So what is one half divided by two? Using fractions here, we know we would multiply by the reciprocal of this. So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by half. So this is basically one over two squared, right? One over two squared or one fourth. But again, I want to write this as one over two squared because you're going to see something interesting in a minute. Let me erase this. As we go one more time to complete this pattern, I'm going to divide by two. So two to the power of negative three is what? It's one over, this is one over two squared times another half. So this exponent here just increases by one. So this is one over two cubed. So one over two cubed or one eighth. Now, You'll notice that the exponent down here matches the exponent here in terms of absolute value. The exponent here matches the exponent here in terms of absolute value. Again, here and here. So that's going to lead us to the following rule. So for any real number x, as long as x is not equal to 0, if we raise it to the power of negative a, it's equal to 1 over x raised to the power of a. So in layman's terms, Basically, you take the reciprocal of the base and you make the exponent positive. So in other words, if I wanted two to the power of negative four, I would take the reciprocal of two, which is one half, and I would make the exponent part, which is negative four here, positive, okay? So you get one over two to the fourth power or just one sixteenth. Very, very easy rule to implement. So let's take a look at a few easy examples we have six raised to the power of negative two. 
So all I want to do is take the reciprocal of the base 6, so that's 1 over 6, and I want to make my exponent positive. Right now it's negative 2, it's just going to be a 2. You could leave this as 1 over 6 squared, or you could say this is 1 over 36. Okay, both answers are correct. Now, one thing I want to show you before we kind of get deeper into the lesson, a common technique to do this is to write this over 1, and then as you drag an exponential expression across a fraction bar, what happens is you leave the base the same, and you change the sign of the exponent. So this would be 6 squared down here, and this would just be a 1 up here, right? And to make that crystal clear, you could start off by just multiplying this by 1, so the 1 is still there in the end. Okay, so that comes in really handy when you're working with something like, let's say I gave you 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3. Well, instead of going through kind of a lot of mess there, you can just drag this up here and say this is 2, change the sign of the exponent to positive, so this is 2 cubed, okay? If you wanted to do this kind of the long way, what you would do is you would say this is 1 over 1 divided by, you would have 2 raised to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed. And so now what you would do is you're dividing 1 over 1 by 1 over 2 cubed, right? So it would be 1 times the reciprocal of this, which is 2 cubed, which equals 2 cubed, okay? So a very, very lengthy process when you have this scenario where this guy's in the denominator. So it's just easier to drag it across the fraction bar, keep the base the same, change the sign of the exponent. All right, so let's look at another one. So we have 3 to the power of negative 4. Again, all I want to do is take the reciprocal of the base, so 1 over 3, change the sign of negative 4 to positive 4, and I have 1 over 3 to the fourth power, or you could say 1 over 81. Suppose we had something like x to the power of negative z. How could we write this without a negative exponent? Take the reciprocal of the base, so 1 over x, and this would be raised to the power of positive z, okay? So this is 1 over x to the power of z. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So we have 3x to the power of negative 5, y to the power of negative 2. This is over. We have z to the power of negative 4, q to the 8th power. So if I wanted to simplify this or write it without any negative exponents, what I could do is I could leave 3 unchanged in the numerator. I have this x to the power of negative 5. How could I write that without a negative exponent? Well, I could just drag this across the fraction bar, keep x the same, so again, keep the base part the same, change the sign of the exponent. So right now it's a negative 5, we would make this a positive 5. We're going to do the same thing for y raised to the power of negative 2. Again, just drag it across the fraction bar. This becomes y raised to the power of what? Change the sign from negative to positive. So you get y squared down there. Now in terms of my denominator here, I have z raised to the power of negative 4. So if I drag this into the numerator, same thing applies, right? If you cross the fraction bar, you just keep the base the same. So z stays the same. Change the sign of the exponent. So from negative 4, it will become positive 4. And then my q to the 8th power here, I don't need to do anything with that other than just leave it in the denominator. It does not currently have a negative exponent, so I don't need to do anything with it. So I end up with 3z to the 4th power over, we have x to the 5th power, y squared, q to the 8th power. All right, for the next one we have, inside of parentheses, 2 times x raised to the power of negative 2 times z raised to the power of negative 1 times q. So this whole thing inside of parentheses is raised to the power of negative 3. Then this is all over 3n to the 4th power. So to simplify here, I'm going to use my power to power rule. So each part here is going to be raised to the power of negative 3. So I would have 2 raised to the power of negative 3. I would have x to the power of negative 2 raised to the power of negative 3. So what do I do there? I keep my base x the same. I multiply exponents. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. z to the power of negative 1 is raised to the power of negative 3. Keep z the same. Multiply negative 1 times negative 3. That's 3. And then q is raised to the power of negative 3. Okay. Then this is over 3n to the fourth power. Okay, so what do we have here that has a negative exponent? So we have this guy and we have this guy. So let's just drag those across the fraction bar. So if I take 2 to the power of negative 3 and I place it in the denominator, 2 stays the same and the exponent changes to positive 3. x to the 6th power, I leave that in the numerator. z cubed, I leave that in the numerator. 
This guy, q to the power of negative 3, drag it across. So q comes down here. The exponent changes from negative to positive. So I get q cubed, and then I have 3n to the fourth power. So let's clean this up. We know 2 cubed is 8, and 8 times 3 is 24. So I'm going to write this as x to the sixth power, z cubed, over, I'm going to have 24, and then times q cubed, and then times n to the fourth power. Okay, that would be my answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have x squared, y to the power of negative 1, z to the fourth, inside of parentheses, and this is raised to the power of negative 7. So again, I'm going to use my power to power rule. So x squared is raised to the power of negative 7. x stays the same. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. y to the power of negative 1 is raised to the power of negative 7. y stays the same. Negative 1 times negative 7 is 7. And then z to the fourth power is raised to the power of negative 7. z stays the same. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. So if I want to deal with this guy right here with the negative exponent and this guy right here, y to the seventh power just stays in the numerator. x to the power of negative 14, I'm just going to drag the x down here into the denominator. Negative 14 becomes positive 14. I'm going to drag this z down here into the denominator. Negative 28 becomes positive 28. So my answer here is y to the seventh power over x to the 14th power, z to the 28th power. All right, so now that we have a great understanding of how to work with negative exponents, let's move on and talk about the quotient rule for exponents. This is very, very simple. Basically, when we divide with like bases, we keep the base the same, and we subtract the exponent in the denominator away from the exponent in the numerator, okay? Very important there that you follow that direction. When we looked at the product rule for exponents, it didn't matter how you add it because addition is, it's irrelevant, right? The commutative property tells me if I add two plus three or three plus two, I get the same result. Subtraction is not commutative, so you got to make sure you do this in the right order. So if I have something like x to the power of a over x to the power of b, this is equal to x raised to the power of a minus b. So why is that the case? Well, let's look at an example. So let's look at this 2 to the 7th power over 2 cubed. So following our rule, the base 2 would stay the same, and I would subtract 3, the exponent in the denominator, away from 7, the exponent in the numerator. So this would be 2 raised to the power of 7 minus 3. We know that 7 minus 3 is 4, so this would be 2 to the 4th power, or 16 if you wanted to write that. Now, let's think about why this is the case. What is 2 to the 7th power? It's 7 factors of 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 factors of 2. Okay? What is 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, well, if I write these over each other like this, it is very clear that I can basically cancel three of these guys, right? Because I can cancel this with this, this with this, and this with this. So I've removed three factors of 2. What did I do here? I started with 7 and I removed 3 and I ended up with 4. Same thing here. Okay, so that's all you're really doing. And it works either way. If I wrote, if I wrote, let's say, 2 to the third power, or 2 cubed, over 2 to the fifth power, the exponent in the denominator is larger here. So I have more factors of 2 in the denominator. It's still going to work. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This is 2 times 2 times 2. So following this, this cancels, this cancels, this cancels. I'm basically going to have 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth, right? If I follow my formula, what do I have? Base stays the same. Subtract the exponent in the denominator, which is 5, away from the exponent in the numerator, which is 3. So 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So this equals 2 to the power of negative 2. We all know at this point that this is what? Reciprocal of the base, which is 1 over 2. Make the exponent positive, so it's 1 over 2 squared. It's exactly what we have here, okay? So it works the same way, whether you have a larger number of factors in the denominator or a larger number of factors in the numerator, you just follow the pattern. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. 
So we have 5 squared times x squared times y to the 4th power. And this is over. We have 5 cubed times x to the ninth power times y cubed. So if we wanted to simplify this, we would look for like bases. We have 5 squared over 5 cubed. So 5 would stay the same. And then again, I would subtract the exponent in the denominator, so the 3, away from the exponent in the numerator, which is a 2. So I would have 5 raised to the power of 2 minus 3. And we know that's negative 1, but let's replace that in a minute. Let's just keep going for now. So then we have x squared over x to the ninth power. So x stays the same. And then we're going to raise this to the power of what? It's this guy, the 9, that's being subtracted away from this guy, the 2. So we have 2 minus 9. We know that's negative 7, but again, we'll do that in a minute. Then we have y to the fourth power over y cubed. So y stays the same. And then we want to do 4 minus 3, right? Because this is the guy in the denominator. This is the guy in the numerator. You want the guy in the denominator, which is 3, to be subtracted away from the guy in the numerator, which is 4. So this is 4 minus 3. So this ends up being what? Again, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, so 5 to the power of negative 1. You have x raised to the power of 2 minus 9, so x raised to the power of what? That's negative 7. And then y raised to the power of 4 minus 3, which is just y. So now, if I think about how to simplify this, if I want to get rid of 5 raised to the power of negative 1, that's what? It's just 1 fifth. But again, a simpler way to do that is just to set up a little fraction bar. y stays in the numerator, because it does not have a negative exponent. This guy right here, if I drag it into the denominator, the 5 part stays the same. The exponent changes from negative 1 to positive 1. And a positive 1 as an exponent is implied, right? So you don't need to write it. Then I have x to the power of negative 7. Again, if I drag this into the denominator, I'm going to have my x parts stay the same. My negative 7 will change to positive 7. So we basically have y over 5x to the 7th power. All right, let's take a look at one more. So we have 7 that's multiplied by x to the power of negative 2 times y cubed times z to the power of negative 4. This is over. We have inside of parentheses x multiplied by y to the 4th power multiplied by z squared. This is all raised to the power of negative 2. So the first thing I want to do is kind of simplify down here. So let me just rewrite this. I have 7x to the power of negative 2, y cubed, z to the power of negative 4. Down here, i got to use my power to power rule. So x would be raised to the power of negative 2. y would be raised to the power of what? Keep that the same. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. z would stay the same. Multiply 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4. So now I'm just looking at... I have a 7 up here. Nothing's going to change with that. I have x to the power of negative 2 over x to the power of negative 2. What is that? That's just 1, right? If I have x to the power of negative 2 over x to the power of negative 2, same thing over itself is going to be 1, okay? Unless it's 0, and we're assuming that x is not 0 here. So I can show you this also by saying keep x the same. Take this guy right here, negative 2, and subtract it away from negative 2. What is negative 2 minus a negative 2? This is negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, so that guy's canceled. So you can cancel this. Same thing for the z. You have z to the power of negative 4, z to the power of negative 4, cancel it. So all I have left is a y raised to the power of 3 over a y raised to the power of negative 8. So you're going to subtract this guy away from this guy. Okay, so if I subtract negative 8 away from 3. So 3 minus a negative 8. Be careful there. You want to minus the negative 8. This is the same thing as 3 plus 8, which is 11. Okay. So you get 7y to the 11th power. Now, another way you could have done this, you could have had 7 up here. You could drag the y up. So you could have y cubed. If you drag the y down here up into the numerator, it's y. The exponent changes from negative 8 to 8. Then you can just use your product rule, right, for exponents. So you have 7y raised to the power of 3 plus 8, which is 11. Okay? So a lot of different ways to kind of do the same thing, whatever you're more comfortable with. If you like dragging things across the fraction bar, cool. Just keep the base the same, change the sign of the exponent. Okay? If it goes across from numerator to denominator or denominator to numerator, you also have the method of just taking the reciprocal of the base and making the exponent positive. So either way you want to do it.